Hi everybody, um, welcome to my kitchen, uh, pardon the mess. Um, today I am going to show you how to make your own uh, straw reed. Um, these are great fun and you can use paper straws or you can use plastic straws. I prefer to use paper because it's kinder to the environment. Um, plastic ones, if you do use them, make sure you dispose of them very thoughtfully. Okay, so what is a reed? Well, a reed is something that you find at the top of a lot of wind instruments. Um, clarinets use a reed, saxophones use a reed, oboes use a reed, bassoons use a bigger reed, um, and also you find reeds in bagpipes um, and other instruments as well. So they're commonly used because when they vibrate, they create a sound which we can then change using our fingers or, or, or the type of instrument that we stick the reed into. So reeds are really important, just like the rubber band going across the Tupperware. A reed starts the vibration, which then travels down the instrument and becomes a musical sound. Um, and we're going to use a straw to demonstrate how that works. So it's your regular circular straw, as you can see. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flatten that end down with our fingers. OK, so I'm going to make it flat. I'm going to flatten about, hmm, I was going to say an inch, maybe a centimetre and a half of paper. Can you see? It's now very oval and I've flattened about that much of it at the end. OK, and now here's a tricky bit. You might need an adult to help you. I am going to snip in two spots. I'm going to snip the edge here slightly towards the centre and the edge here slightly towards the centre. So where I folded it, where it's flattened down the side, I'm just going to release that opening. So I'm going to snip one slightly diagonal cut towards the middle of the straw. Can you see? Like that. And I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Slightly diagonal cut. Watch your fingers because paper straws are quite thick. And then we have something that's basically a spear shape with a slightly flat top. Um, and that's what we want. Now, if you look at the side here, I'm just going to pop it open a wee bit. You can see that you have like a crocodile's mouth at the top. And that is basically our double reed. There's two reeds and they vibrate um, when we blow over them. Now, sometimes paper reeds take a little bit of time to get going. So I'm just going to flatten it down a bit more and then I'm going to open it up so that it definitely isn't touching at the top. I'll wet it slightly. Let's see if we can get a sign. I'm going to flatten it a wee bit more. It's closing over. <laughs> I've got it going now. So when you blow, when you've got your reed done, it might not always make a sound straight away. That's okay. That's pretty normal for reed instruments. Um, we can flatten it down slightly more further down here and maybe give it a squeeze at the sides just to let the two open up and basically just fiddle with it. Fooder, as we say in Northern Ireland, give it a wee fooder. Fooder with it until you get it going and you'll actually feel if it wants to sort of start to vibrate. You'll feel that in your, in your mouth and your throat. And sometimes these paper reeds, um, they do well with a little bit of spit on them, you just moisten them slightly. And you'll feel the vibrations around your mouth when you blow. Now, really important, when you blow this, you don't want to stop the vibrations at the end. These bits here, the little crocodile mouth needs to be able to move up and down. So you're going to put more of it in your mouth. So move your mouth beyond where the two edges come together, let that crocodile's mouth stay open and put, put a little bit more of it in your mouth. And that should give you your sign. Now, at the moment, we've got a tube that's, I don't know, maybe 25 centimetres long, something like that. And it's giving us this note. Okay, now if I snip the end off, what do you think is going to happen to that note? Is it going to get higher or is it going to get lower? As the tube gets shorter, is that note going to go up or is it going to go down? Shall we see? What do you think? Is it going to go up or down? So the tube's getting shorter. So there's less of it to vibrate. So that probably means it's going to go... Will we see? So that went up quite a bit. Went to a higher note the shorter the tube was. So the point of this exercise is to show you that the bigger the tube, the lower the sound, and the shorter the tube, 
the higher the sound. Okay, so the pitch changes depending on the length of the tube and you'll see that in all wind instruments when you've got a little tiny piccolo, which doesn't use a reed, a little tiny flute makes a very high sound, a little tiny clarinet makes a high sound, big bassoon, big reed makes a really low sound. Um, and that is the principle behind reed instruments and you can make your own and then maybe, like maybe you saw in the video that I made the other day, you can make get different lengths of straw and make different pitches on them, experiment and see can you get lots of different lengths. Um, and that's it. I'm gonna add on one wee quick thing before the kids find me. Um, if you wanna make it into a real instrument, you wanna level up your reed, um, your straw reed. Here we go, put a couple of holes in it. See that? You see them? A couple of little holes. Cover them with your fingers. <laughs> Basically, it's making it different lengths of straw in one straw. It's exactly the way woodwind instruments work. Long pipe, shorter pipe, shortest pipe, because the air can come out these little holes that you've put in. So, send me your videos, I'd love to see them. Okay, I'll see you in Kids in Tune group for Key Stage 1 workshops on Wednesday mornings at 11am and the ukulele workshops for Key Stage 2 and Mums and Dads on Friday mornings at 11 o'clock. Um, okay, enjoy. Bye.